Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to Goal Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte and we are going to take a look today at the Columbus Blue Jackets. So the Blue Jackets are wheeling and dealing, making some big moves. They re-signed Patrick Lyonne. They brought in Johnny Hockey Goudreau. But unfortunately with that price, somebody had to go out the door. So we're going to take a look at that today. So to start things off, we have a trade. Seattle Kraken acquire Oliver Bjorkstrand and his signing rights in exchange for a 2023 third round pick and a fourth round pick. Now, Columbus Blue Jackets fans were upset, right? Ah, oh, man, we only got a third and a fourth for a really good winger, right? Very underrated in Columbus. Bjorkstrand has been a great addition there. Some people were worried he might become a bust early in his career. He kind of got a slow start in his career in the NHL. He's really developed, though, into a nice scoring winger. And the Seattle Kraken are just munching those guys up, right? You look at the guys they've been adding recently. They added Andre Burakovsky this summer. Now they add Oliver Bjorkstrand. Now you add Shane Wright in the draft. They have just added three guys that can legitimately play in the top six in Seattle next year. They, you know, at the end of the season, uh, you know, Dave Haxtell, and Ron Francis, the GM, were talking a lot about how they want to add scoring guys. They were able to do that. And unfortunately for the Blue Jackets, this is the price of the salary cap era. They are still a million dollars over the salary cap right now, um, over the salary cap ceiling. But I do expect some guys to go on LTIR or they make another trade. So it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but they only acquired a third and fourth round pick for his signing rights. So that's the other piece of this you have to remember. Um... So kind of interesting to see where the Jackets are at right now. Yeah, so this is what you have to remember. So some of these guys are going to go on the long-term injured reserve. Boone Jenner is on uh, the IR. Alex Texier and Danieli Tarasov. All three of those guys are on that situation right now. So we'll see what happens. Could develop into something. Um, but the other big news here for the Jackets is Patrick Laine. Patrick Laine signs a four-year extension to stay in Columbus. So some good news here. They keep both um, they keep both their guys, right? Johnny Hockey comes in at $9.75 million per, and Patrick Laine comes in at $8.7 million per season. Um, really good deal. Patrick Laine comes in. He comes back to the Jackets. He's only 24 years old. One of the best releases in the National Hockey League. He has such a good shot. Now, the first year of this deal, he could be traded anywhere. But the remaining three years of the deal, he has a modified no-trade clause where he submits a 10-team no-trade list. So there is some um, volatility to this. So there is, an about, uh, there is an ability to trade him. Now, his salary is kind of weird. The first year, it's going to come in at $7.5 million as total salary. And then in years two, three, and four, it comes in at $9.1 million per season. Um, it's a four-year deal, $34.8 million. And uh, shout-out to Spit Chicklets. They posted saying that most of this money is going to go to Fortnite skins because we know Patrick Line is a big video game guy, so... Uh, well, you know, that was kind of funny, but we'll see what happens. You know, this is a big pickup for the Jackets. We, you know, a lot of Jackets fans were thinking, oh, well, that's the end of line night, right? Just because we signed Goudreau. Yarmo Kekalainen has had a great offseason so far. And honestly, as a rival fan in the Metropolitan Division, I don't like seeing the Jackets right now. They are doing very well this offseason, just beefing up that division even more than it already is. And listen, sorry to those Flyers fans because... Everybody else in that division is just going to topple you alive. I mean, this is a really good group. You have the one-two punch of Lyonne and Goudreau. And I talked about this when they when they signed Goudreau. This is a good thing for Lyonne because all the pressure won't be on Lyonne anymore. They've got their primary guy in Goudreau who's going to score goals. Teams are going to try and shut him down. And that gives a little bit more room for Patrick Lyonne, maybe to catch the second or third pairing defenseman in order to maybe score more goals. And I think he is, again, he's done well in Columbus, but as the number one guy, it's not going to work as well. I think now there's some depth there. This is a really good thing for him. He's going to come back, he's going to be ready to go, and he's going to have some new linemates to play with next season. Excellent here for the Jackets. Jarmo Kekalainen, 
Got not, not not much to say here. Really good signing overall. They also did trade Bjorkstrand, which sucks. But so far, this has been the summer of Columbus. The Blue Jackets have done very well this offseason. But let me know what you guys think. In the comment section down below, what do you think of the Jackets? What are their weaknesses? Do they need to add some more depth to replace Bjorkstrand? What about the goalie situation? Are you 100% in between the pipes? Last year, that was one of their things. I was like, I don't know how this is going to work long term. Let me know what you guys think. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.